In this month's economic update, Kaplan Professional Education's Michael Pollock speaks to an industry economist about the short-term domestic and global economic outlook. Welcome to a special federal budget edition of Kaplan Professional's monthly economic update. I'm Michael Pollock and today we're speaking with Chief Economist and Principal at Compass Economics, Hans Cunnan. Thanks for joining us, Hans. Pleasure to be here, Michael. So firstly, what's your take on the 2017 federal budget? Look, it's, it's, it's a mostly status quo. It's a, bu it's a practical budget. Previous budgets, they simply couldn't get measures through. The Senate has blocked things. Um, so what do you do? You play the cards you've got. What are areas where we could raise some revenue? F few people are going to argue against uh, raising some extra taxes or levies on the banks, uh, and people don't mind paying the NDIS. So it's, th their aim is to get a surplus. They haven't been able to get it through all the savings measures that were totally unpopular, so they've gone to the revenue side. Um, look, it won't create economic boom, but neither will it cruel the economy. They can't afford to do huge expenditure cuts with the economy still a touch, a touch fragile. So my view, it, it, it's pragmatic. Uh, it will, the bulk of it will get through the Senate and we'll be able to move on and then plan again. Hopefully at some stage there'll be some structural reform, doing the proper, the real things that need to get the economy moving again. But as a step forward towards achieving a budget surplus, which we should get after 26 years of growth, um, uh, it's reasonable. It's the only uncertainty I have, as, uh, as people, other people have said, is some of the, the forecasts are a bit uh, optimistic. To what extent do you expect this budget to give the economy a much needed boost to confidence and spending? Well, interesting question. Previous budgets have actually detracted from confidence. This one doesn't damage confidence, and to the extent that there's some infrastructure spending which people like, um, it, it adds to confidence, but not in a big way. This is not a shot in the arm. This is not popping champagne. This is a sort of a status quo. It's not going to damage confidence, and, that, and that's a good thing. As for lifting it, only marginally. Was the government's decision to do the infrastructure spending itself, rather than incentivising others to do it, the right move, in your opinion? Uh, I think it goes part of the way. When you look at the, the, the positive reception that uh, Victoria and New South Wales have had through infrastructure, they want to go on the coattails of, hey, infrastructure, infrastructure spending is currently popular and it does create jobs in the short term. Whether it's a good long-term investment remains to be seen. But um, by, by getting involved again and being able to borrow at very low rates, they've been encouraged by economists to step up in the infrastructure space for a while. Um, could they have done it to pri could they have got more private uh, activity going? They will probably work on that so that they hopefully get the best value for taxpayers. But it's popular, it creates jobs, um, and so it lifts confidence, it lifts their perception, so it's been done. The government now seems to be focused on increasing revenue with a plan for it to grow by more than 4% in real terms over the next four years. But that rate has only been achieved once since the GFC. How realistic is this target in your view? I think it, it leans towards optimism. When you look at the expected wages growth and the expected employment growth, they are towards the optimistic side. Wages are only growing at 2%. They're expecting down the track three and a half, but they're not expecting unemployment rates to change much. It doesn't seem to add up. So uh, yeah, they're optimistic and uh, I have my doubts and it may take them a little longer to get back towards surplus. So Hans, to what extent do you expect the 30% tax offset on voluntary super contributions for first home buyers to have on tensions in the housing market? Uh, basically zero. You have the word salary, sacrifice. They're not two words that go together <laughs> for 35 year olds. Uh, putting away money now. The amount of money to be saved through taxation is minimal. The paperwork will be maximal. Uh, and let's say you can't afford to buy a house for 10 years. You're putting money away for ages that could have been invested elsewhere. It, it will look great, it'll play well in the media, but like other schemes that have sought to save taxation or pay a higher rate of interest, they were just were never taken up. 
and I just have my doubts. Nice idea, but I just don't think the take up and its impact will be particularly great. Could you please explain for us why the budget has given increased prominence to the net operating balance as opposed to the underlying cash balance? That's to separate the, the underlying issue is this good debt versus bad debt. Uh, the government has paraded buses, the, 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 the debt bus, the, the debt clock. Not all debt is bad. And so they've tried to focus away from the bad debt and say, look, we are covering our day-to-day -day expenses. We only borrow to build railways and roads and infrastructures and get rid of the bottleneck in your street. Taking on debt for that will be seen as positive. It should have been done five years ago. They, they finally twigged that uh, they can actually borrow money with a AAA credit rating at historical low interest rates to fix up some of the problems for productivity around the country. So uh, basically it's a change of mindset for them and to make others aware that there is such a thing as borrowing for good purposes. Thanks very much for your time today, Hans. It was a pleasure being here.